What up, what up, what up, what up, world? It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. Pop Dust presents our number two. Special thanks to Miko for stopping by. Now, we know that the Royal Wedding was this weekend, but we have Pop Royalty from across the pond joining us here today. We got Aston Marigold. Woo! I like that. I like that. I like that. Oh. I like how you did that. You know what I'm saying? I've been working on my segues, you know, it's kind of a thing, you know, this look one. in the mirror, give myself a little pep talk, like you're going to sway the interview in the right direction. You're winning. You're winning. That's, <laughs> that's cool. But thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for having me. I'm good. Awesome to have you here. We're looking forward to a dope performance from you and a great interview. And speaking of dope music, another segue, you care to bless us with an opening track to get things started? Let's do it, man. Yeah, why not? Yeah! yeah. Oh, by the way, Dan and Jameer, y'all the ugliest, pretty young things I've ever seen in my life. When you said pretty young things, repeat after me. He's a. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, nothing but the best, nothing but the finest and entertaining when it comes to Pop Dust presents courtesy of Aston Marigold. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you. Aston, may I call you Aston? Uh, please, yeah. Thank you. Um, tell people a little bit about yourself. Um, where you grew up, um, how much money your parents have, um, <laughs> where are you currently residing, and where do you keep all of your valuables? Okay, okay. Um, in what, any order or? Any order in particular. Any order, okay. So the valuables are most, no. Um, <laughs> Originally from, uh, I suppose, a small city back in England, uh, just outside London. Uh, now I live in London and just been there for years, just kind of, you know, trying to tick on, trying to, I suppose, make music a career. Do you know what I mean? Just make it part of the, you know, the everyday um, lifestyle, which I managed to do. And uh, yeah, man, I spent a lot of time, which is actually the remix that I did there in the PYT song, Everybody in Love. It was a, it was a big hit um, at home and back across Europe with the boy band I used to be in. Called JLS, so I thought I'd just throw a little bit of a bit of love to those guys back at home. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I said like I'm, I've, I've been and done that for years, and obviously been pursuing the solo journey now for a couple of years. So I'm, uh, yeah, it's nice to be over this side of the world. Awesome, happy to have you here. Thank man. you, man. So back to your boy band days. Yeah. You know. What was that whole experience like, you know, coming up as a youngin' in the game, yeah. mixing and mingling with different personalities, being on the road with these guys, and guys are actually on the X Factor, right? Yeah, yeah, we started on X Factor in two, 2008, so like 10 years ago, which is, makes me a little bit older than people probably think, so I'm a bit like, uh, we won't go into how old I am. But, um, yeah, yeah, it started 2008, and we, we actually made the band in the end of 2006, so we were on the grind, we were, we were trying to, you know, do all the boys to men stuff to, you know, the, the shy stuff to, you know, everything just was about vocal harmonies and the love of music. And we, uh, yeah, we just managed to kind of kick down the, uh, the TV doors and, and, yeah, you know, just make people somehow get to like us, I suppose. Well, so. Don't be modest. Millions of records sold. <laughs> Never lost. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, Sorry, you know, sometimes Don't you gotta, be sorry, I love sometimes, it. Sometimes you gotta flex, man. So, so, yeah, um, yeah, sometimes you gotta flex, yeah. but obviously you use that as a springboard and now you're on pace to kind of carve your own lane out as a solo artist, yes. which we definitely appreciate because, man, got some, got some chops, man. You might, might have you. a future in this business. Thank you, man, I'm trying, I'm trying. So, songwriter, singer, yeah. dancer, amazing dancer. How do you choose which hat to wear and you know when to wear it? Sometimes you gotta wear them all at once. Oh, but yeah, if you literally. Had to... Sometimes you do have to wear them all, and I often like to wear them all at once, just because I think, especially this age, there's probably a handful of people that are doing all of that on stage and able to put on. Um, I think we've got incredible vocalists out there in the music industry, um, incredible entertainers. There's, but I don't really think there's a lot of people. You could probably count on one, maybe two hands max, of the people that do it all. Do you know what I'm saying? And bring it all to their shows and. and you know, if you went to one of their concerts, you'll be leaving and just be like buzzed and just don't really know what's just hit you. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, man, I just take a lot from, well, I try and take a lot and just learn as much as I can from the greats of the past. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, listen, it's a big world out there. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, there's a lot to kind of, a lot of people to perform in front of, so. Yeah, definitely. So 
with you being so multifaceted in mm -hmm. music, having all these different talents and attributes, who are some of your inspirations and some of the artists that you pattern yourself after? Um, I think the, uh, the biggest is definitely Michael. Michael Jackson is just the... Uh, Didn't pick that up in the least bit. No? no. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it, it, like, it's just everything. It's the, that was the epitome of a pop star. And I think mm -hmm. that was when a lot of mystique was kind of around, um, I suppose, the industry and artists. You know what I mean, whereas now, the tables have totally turned and it's about kind of getting out there and, and you look at kind of some of the um, the artists I suppose have made their name and the people have really pushed them like you take Cardi B for instance she's literally the people have gone no 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 you're winning yeah. and we're going to make you win and, and be a representative gang 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 but. see there you go <laughs> nah but she listen she's killing do you know what I mean and there's um, you know like, like I said with Michael and, and you've got like James Brown um, Sammy Davis Jr like all of them talking the real the real old school cats that just yeah, they were they were entertainment personified. It's like yeah. you said, they didn't just stick to one specific aspect. They used different tools and different mediums to showcase their talent. Being, exactly. You know, on stage and even behind the scenes, being very yeah. very shrewd and you know oh, very tough businessmen. So do you 100%. feel like, in a sense, that <clears throat> off stage you kind of patting yourself, being very very particular about the things that you want for yourself and your brand? Um, definitely now, definitely now. I've had a lot of kind of uh, a lot of years to learn mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and just kind of take in and if you're sitting in like I was sitting in meetings 10 years ago and just being like I'm new to this I just give me the mic I just want the mic and I just want to go to the stage I'm not really bothered about what you know an accountant has to come in and tell you you know mm. what you have to do with this this and this and you know oh you've got certain promo to kind of do here and we're like cool do I get to sing we go, oh, okay so one of the other boys can they can speak then because I'm I'm ready to kind of yeah. just perform but you you do you learn everything and you have to be open enough to just be a sponge and take in as much as physically possible just to, uh, you know, if you can master everything behind the camera and I suppose be your own boss and, and I suppose just run your own business from behind, then it just makes the pathway nice and clear for you to be on, you know, any stage you want. Awesome, awesome. So you coming into the music at a young age, do you feel mm -hmm. like it was an advantage and in some aspects a hindrance coming in at so young because there's a lot that you haven't been exposed to there's a lot that you're trying to get acclimated to so do you feel like there were good and bad aspects of coming into the game at a young age um definitely yes and no i think it's you get more time to learn um which is great and and you if you ever do make any mistakes and you are that young you've got time to rectify them and, and learn from them in a big way but yeah, I just think this industry, you could, like, sometimes I know a lot of people, they either go, they can handle the pressure or they can't. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It just depends how you do bounce back from that kind of stuff. And like, I've definitely not had everything go my way exactly to plan. Mm -hmm. But if you do veer off left or you, you know, veer off right, whatever, it's a bit like you just have to know how to get back on the path. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You have to be strong enough and thick skinned enough to, especially with social media and stuff like that, and that kind of change to, the industry now you really have to you know be as thick skinned as physically possible and just stay so focused because you can just be on that that timeline and just you know yeah and people just pick you apart for every little thing everything exactly yeah but with some of those detours sometimes you may take a left you may take a right but they may be for the better and they may be for the worse because sometimes you may not exactly end up where you wanted to but sometimes yeah. the route that you took might be a better one for you. Exactly. You don't. You never know what's around the corner. Like literally, you never, never know. Like with, like my single now. It's just I wrote that like three years ago. Do you know what I mean? Three or three and a half years ago, and it's three and a half years later, and it and it's, it's getting love. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see it like that. I thought I'd be, you know, yeah, two albums deep maybe or something. You know, but you just have these plans and these goals to kind of do it. But listen, it's a it's a very peculiar industry yeah sometimes you got to think on the fly you got to move on the fly yeah. and those who are able to adapt in those situations are people that stick around for the longest exactly and speaking of sticking around for the longest you dipped and dabbled into other facets of entertainment so to speak you know a little acting a little bit of lip syncing yeah. so what's that like you know being more of a personality as opposed to just the voice of somebody that dances um i think you know what that just goes back to what I was saying about being thick skinned, I said, if, if, if you can handle the pressure, then by all means, you can just try different aspects of the industry. And I'm just not really, you know, everyone gets the, you know, everyone's seen it, you get the bad comments. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just like, okay, 
mm. cool, this person didn't enjoy it, but I'm going to focus on everything over here that looks positive and good. And, you know, if someone enjoyed that performance, cool, I'm going to do it again. And especially with the acting thing, like I'm, I'm, I'm not trained in anything that I do in this industry like mm. at all, but I just love it. And if something works enough that people enjoy it, like that's, that's, that's what I feed off. Like I'm, I'm here to entertain and I just want to, provide as much entertainment as physically physically possible so whether it be music acting dancing anything like that i'm just yeah i'm down to do it because it's it's all part of the strings to the bow you know yep speaking of putting all your talents into one basket so to speak you recently became a father indeed congratulations thank you man so how's that not just for you as a man but Mm. as an artist i feel like you, you You've already had an incentive Mm -hmm. to be successful and be driven and motivated when it comes to your career. But now when you have that little life staring back at you, how does that make you feel when it comes to you pursuing your dream? Listen, it has to work. It just, I think there's, there's, it's it's plain and simple. It has to work. Uh, That's, you know, I've chose this route to to put food on the table. So now it has to work. Do you know what I mean? For him to grow up with the lifestyle that I want to give him, this has to work. So there's no real option. I don't, want, I don't want to give myself an option because as soon as you do, you're preparing to fail, I, I believe. So I don't really want to have a plan B or a plan C. I'm like, no, plan A. Mm-hmm. And that's it. There's no, there's no veering off. There's a bit like, like you said, you can take a different path, but it's still going to be the same end goal. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's like, as much as the goal used to be for me, it's doesn't like, I'm, I'm happy to reach that goal, but now for this little man, do you know what I mean? So has to work. Yeah, so with this new addition to your life and to your mm. family, creatively, how has that inspired you? Do you feel like you're a lot more daring? You're willing to take a lot more risk in regards to your art and put yourself mm-hmm. in a different stratosphere than you were before, knowing that you have sort of like a new lease on life being a father? Definitely, definitely, man. I'm just like, obviously always, yeah, I think for me, I'm like, I'm not, not that I'm ever like cautious in any way because this is a creative industry. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You have to take the risks. But at the same time, I want to take calculated risks. Do you know what I mean? If I see something, I go, do you know what? I can see a future in that. Like I've just opened a dance studio at home um, with my missus and, and one of my really, really good friends and business partner. And it's, for us, we kind of go, well, we understand that. That's something that we understand and we understand the industry around it. And it just made sense to kind of jump into that world. It's a bit like, well, I'm going to, be paying out for somewhere to rehearse half the time. Why not actually get a place where I can rehearse and utilize, but at the same time, make it a home for the dance industry. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's stuff like that that I go, that, that's all part of them being within the industry and all about being part of me. And, and yeah, man, I just, I just thought, listen, any business, it, start a business is, is a risk, but as I said, it just has to be a calculated um, execution. Awesome, awesome. So. Your new single, or your new old single, <laughs> Get Stupid. <laughs> new old single. Once again, you touched on how a song that you wrote three years ago, and yep. all of a sudden, kind of came back to life a la Walking Dead, and took on a whole new life of its own. Indeed. How did it feel knowing that something that you created so long ago, well, not so long ago, but mm. a few years ago, all of a sudden, is now lending itself to be something that can pretty much put your trajectory into a whole different stratosphere? Yeah. Um, to be honest, it just, to me, proves that I'm not crazy. And it's like, it might sound mad, but- I mean, but you gotta be a little bit crazy to be an artist. So just I mean, <laughs> no, of course, of course. But it's like, you know what it's like when you're, when you're in that room, you're being creative. It's a bit like, yeah, you have to be crazy and put yourself out there. But at the same time, you're like, hold on, was this, was this the right move? Is this the right song? Is this the right sound and whatever? But when people do attach to it and they, you know, especially now when they hear this and they go, oh yeah, I like that song. And I'm like, oh, so I was right. I was right that because that's the only question you have whenever you're making a song. I feel anyway. I do. I'm a bit like, are people going to like this? Yes or no? But there's only one way to find out. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like you, you have to put it out there. You have to give people the opportunity to say yes or no, and that's that's all part of gamble and part of package with the industry. You know? How do your fans feel about this song kind of getting a rebirth, so to speak? Uh, do you know what? They're they're excited. They're excited. Like really, really excited, and to show the most love and. Do you know, it's probably me that doesn't, I don't feel bad in any way, but I'm a bit like, oh, do they, but they, they want something new. They've heard it and they've lived with like the hardcores have fl- lived with it for like three years. Mm. But on the flip side, it's a bit like it's broadening the audience. And, you know, the more people that are hearing it, the more people are coming to shows like it's there's a difference between 
me doing a, a tour or should I say a few shows, last like three shows last year and then boosting venues this year, like triple the size and doing 10 shows just because of the traction and, 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 and the different audience. So you're being able to put on a bigger and better show for people that have been there for the longer period. So it's, it's just that thing of me going, oh, maybe do I need to put something else out as well because they've lived with it. But in hindsight, it's a bit like, well, new people that are coming gives me the chance to give the ones that have been here as well a better and bigger show. So yeah, they're, 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 to the, uh, they're till the death. Awesome, awesome. Mm. So you being such an amazing dancer, having your own dance studio, if you had to assemble an all-star <laughs> dance troupe, I'm yeah. talking like you got serve status. Oh, okay, okay, you know you're taking of it back any, there, wow. Of any great dancer in the history of dance, who would it be? The history of dance? Are we talking, are we talking musical artists? Are we talking dance? Are we to, uh, what are we, can we... talking dance. I'm talking about the dude that's break dancing at 42nd Street right now, if he's down. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah, like if you had to put together a crew. Like I could just call him now and be like, throw down. Yeah. You mean past, present, dead, alive, like, you know, dream scenario. Oh, really? Scenario. Dead or alive as well? Yeah, dream scenario. I mean, listen, Michael's first. You're calling Michael first. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? You're calling Michael first. And I think, how many am I allowed? Let's give it, let's give it a good four. Give it a good four. Okay. <laughs> Here, uh, we have, uh, all right, Casey can't read my hand, right? We oh, have yeah, questions yep. from the fans. We have questions. Okay. Here, uh, what do we got? Oh. But didn't you say you had, had a few things? We got yeah, a few we got a few things. Got, there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of people, bro. So y'all interrupted me to not give me a question. <laughs> I interrupted. I was listening. That was me. I just, but I just pointed. I tried to just read it, and then you guys just looked at me, so I said it. I mean, it's so good. I have like a, a million watt light bulb in my eyes. Like, I can't. I can't count okay, to twenty. Wait, wait, I can't so, see. There's so, a lot going so, on. So, all right, people. I'm gonna put this at home. You see, this is. Questions from the fans. Bang. Okay. Well, okay. So <laughs> it's, it's questions from the fans now. So we're coming back to that one. I we'll come back. We'll, we'll drop back. a pin. We'll come back. I, just don't forget anything you had in mind. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh, shout out to Chloe Whittingham because she's been like hitting you up and throwing hearts and eyes and all kinds of oh, things. Oh, that love, Chloe. Up. Thank you, man. She says, uh, "What sounds can we expect from the new album? Are they gonna be some old, some new, a fusion?" Do you know what? For me, the project and the album itself is, is quite a precious thing and it's, it's a bit like I'm so inspired by a lot of the old school artists, you know, from like I said, not old, old school as well, but I'm talking like your Justins and your Ushers as well. Do you know what I mean? Your, your, I suppose your recent old schools as such. But there's a lot of sounds in there from like throwbacks to like your Michael-esque feels, James Brown type of feels, but then I said your Ushers and your, and your, your JTs, like more... More those guys like the album, album type like Justified and your, um, I suppose, 8701 type of vibes, which is because that's the stuff I grew up listening to and it's the stuff I still go to now. Like if I'm in my car, I'm, I'm playing that before I have to search for anything new, do you know what I mean? Because it's just easy listening. So that's the inspiration, I would say. So take, take, what, take from that what you, I suppose, be Man, you listen to two albums at 8701, man. Can you help me? Can, can you help me? As a grown man, I just sit and cry <laughs> still. I'm like, I'm not even going through a breakup. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> you did. <laughs> my, my girlfriend's looking at me like, what the f what's the matter with you? <laughs> like, this is an usher, babe. This is an usher. It, it, this, they'll never understand. They, they will never they, understand. They get it. And it's the interlude as well. Oh, my God. It's the interlude that, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to go into it's the speak. Anyway, cool. Sorry. Sorry. Take it from here, from Justified. Look. We'll talk afterwards, but it won't any be more the questions. first time somebody cried up off to us. Come on, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to let it back. Do we have any more questions from the viewing audience? <laughs> yes. Uh, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Gabby, What's up, Sofer, Gabby wants to know what's your most recent tattoo and why did you get it? It's a recent tattoo. I ain't got a tattoo for a couple of years, so. You tatted up. I'm not, honestly, I haven't had a tattoo for a long time. Um, oh, actually, it's probably this one. The 13 and the um, four leaf clover. 13 is just my number, my lucky number, my birthday number. Um, and the four leaf clover is my mum's side of the family. They're all Irish. So it's quite simple, really. I mean, <laughs> there we go. And Gabby, if you're asking, <laughs> if you're asking my, my most recent tattoo is this key right here. And, 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 I, I, I have to say, I, 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 
say, there's an interesting question here. Do you like Bill Nye? That's from Rachel Walsh. Do you like Bill Nye, the science guy? I mean, am I supposed to? I don't know who Bill Nye is. I'm going to lie. Just okay. say yes. <laughs> Just is the answer. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you, you and Bill Nye would get along. I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> everyone's going to be like, no, I want that. Now they're going to switch off now and be like, nah, I have no time for I'm sorry. Nah, nah, nah. There you go. Okay. He says, can you give us a clue? Sienna Doran says, hey, could you give us a clue from a song on your new album? Um, a clue. There's a song on there called Rest of My Life which I wrote, uh, it's probably the last song that was actually written for the album, just just before my son was born. So um, I, I literally just got engaged and my son was literally about to be born and it was like, it, it was, uh, yeah, it was just a perfect, perfect moment. Am I, supposed, do, oh, do, am I supposed to sing a little line or something? I mean, if you want, I mean, I say never give it away for free, even though we're not paying you to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to know what you say. <laughs> there we go. I'm, I'm just saying, just get the album. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you're going to be more than happy when you wait and listen to how amazing it's going to sound, because we know it's going to sound amazing. Thank so, you, man. So, back to my original question. Yes, okay. The dance so, troupe. The dance troupe. <laughs> the dance troupe of the apocalypse. The world is on the line, and only Aston and his merry men of Buster Movers can save us from total destruction. Who are you calling? Um, I'm, I'm calling Michael, as I said, straight up. Michael is, is the one. And I think, for me, again, I think from, from this time period, Chris Brown, because Chris is, is he's bodying a lot of people, and there's not many people that can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, do you know what? Again, I'm going to go, I'm going to, because this one's for me is hard, because I was going to go, is it, is it Justin or Usher? Now, for me... Just dance wise, I'm just saying. For me, I'm set. I know this is a lot of people will be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just dance wise, out of these two, I'm I'm gonna call I'm gonna call Usher. Okay, oh, I'm that's gonna not call. ridiculous, like. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's ridiculous, <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there that be like, hold on, where you go? Wait, chill. <laughs> I'm gonna call Usher on that one. So I have got Michael, Chris, and Usher. Have I got one more? I got one more. I got one more. Okay. One more. One more. One more. One more. Gotta be a good one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it now to one of my favourite, I suppose, he's, he's, everything now for him is online, he's doing a lot of YouTube stuff and everything, it's B-Boy Cloud, um, is just an ultimate creative and magician, so I'm, 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 I'm going to take it there, so, yeah, that's my, that's, that's my troop, I think I, I think I would do quite well in, in uh, uh, Mr. Rad's, um, you know, ring. To fear the world, to save, because yeah. Aston picked the right dance troupe. Now, before we, before we get into this next song, we have a tradition here at Pop Dust Presents where we make our guests read the thrilling teen angst novel, Don't Tell Mom. So, if you would like, it's a great sense. Page, page 14, actually it's funny, right before you're 13. Right before 13. They so, were right at, I'm sorry. if you mind, okay. I'm saying, you know, just, you know. Page 14, you know what I'm saying? Just know that I'm the worst. You know what, like in class, remember when you was in school and the teacher would be like, you, read out that page. <sighs> this moment right now is, um, this is the most nervous I've probably been in years. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Just so you know. Whoa. Reading out loud. This is not something I like to do. This, this, <laughs> Just he didn't go to school to learn how to read. Come it, on, guys. Um, exactly. But, 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 let me set you up, though. Just to <clears throat> put you at ease. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. The literary stylings of <clears throat> Got this, man. I've got this, man. I still have them two cans of white in the basement. Paint's too boring, Mum said. I want something with personality to it. Silently, I agreed with Dad. Our living room used to be white, perfectly good, boring white. And I liked it that way. Then last fall, mum had decided to add some flair. And they painted it an ugly shade of mustard yellow. And we all hated it. Now it looked like we were going to try wallpaper. Green stripes, white swirls, and stinky beige. Great, just, just great. Well, I'm not giving up, Mum said, snapping the book shut. 
And we're not stopping until we find it. Dad groaned. Oh. She ignored him and turned to me. Did you find a dress? Nope. You were gone all the time, you didn't find anything. Nothing, I said. Plopping on the reclining chair, it's hopeless, mum. There's nothing out there. I leaned back, threw my arms over the chair. I'm doomed. Dad laughed, at a low throaty laugh that told me he was amused by the whole thing. Dog, was that fucking Shakespeare? <laughs> no, no, guys, give, give me. Guys, can you give me a minute? Can, yes. give, can you give me a minute? Okay. Give me a minute. <sighs> wow. Um, yeah. So. Sorry, I slammed your book down. No, nah, so. That that touched my soul. That was great. Yeah. Was great. See. If someone cuts that up, by the way, they're going to have a field day with what I just said. Yeah. So, that video is going to be like... Wild. <laughs> well, you fooled us all. He's not stupid in the least bit. <laughs> but, he can definitely get stupid. But with that said, you mind blessing us with get stupid? I just, it's, see, the segues, the segues are just... See, Let and me just, tell you something. Anybody out there, I think right, they do better the segues thing, than me. Thing, <laughs> Do the, do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. There we go. Just, no? We'll Too much? We'll do we'll do I don't know. Thing. I was just excited because that was nice. That was nice. I, was, I got excited about that. I might use that. So before we get into Get Stupid, you mind introducing the world to the man right here on the strings, providing all this beautiful music? Of course. Sorry. That's just like, should have been done from day one. This, everybody, this is Bobby. How we do? Bobby. Woo! Bobby! Bobby! Yeah. Bobby. See? Bobby. That's normally how it goes. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. Aston, thank you so much for stopping by, man. No, thank you, Before honestly. Before you go, let the people know what you got coming up, what you do in the future, where they can catch you, where they can buy your stuff, where they can stalk you, like all that good stuff. It's all there at Aston Marigold, at Aston Marigold, that's across the board, so you can go and check it out if you want to follow, click the follow button, obviously, it's all good. Um, a lot of UK summer shows coming up, but then hopefully I'll be back over here, ASAP. Um, to hopefully jump on some shows and do some live stuff as well um, out there in and around, I suppose, the States and, and worldwide. So, yeah, man, thank you guys for the, for the opportunity and give me a, uh, you know, Definitely. Spot. Bobby, can they find you any place? Uh, yeah, Instagram, I guess. Instagram, <laughs> he's all over it. <laughs> Atlantic Bobby. There Atlantic Bobby. There you go. See? Sounds like a world now gambler's name. Maybe I am. Check it out. Ah. <laughs> so you can catch Atlantic Bobby at your local casino this summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, where can we stalk you? Wait, wait, wait. There was somebody here who's like, wait, wait, where was that? Uh, I think that so, was on the bottom. That was somebody goes, oh, oh right Lee Gs, it's coming back. Where can we stalk you? We're just joking. Do not stalk no, Aston. I didn't say that. That's on No, like you can, I mean, you can stalk obviously online, obviously in person. That might be. You might not be no. greeted in the best way. <laughs> it just, it just depends what day it is and how I feel yeah. as well. Cause you know. And from what I hear, his fiance has a mean right cross. So yeah. <laughs> might, of, and a roundhouse. Yeah. Might yeah. want to stay away, but yeah. yeah. Aston, thank you so much. Bobby, thank you for rocking out with us. And thank you once again, viewing audience, for sticking and hanging out with us this Wednesday on Pop Does Presents. Aston Mary Go, get stupid, make sure you go get that. I go by the name of Decent, and we'll see you next week. Take care, y'all.